What's up everybody and welcome back to An Idiot's Road to Glory, episode numero 27. So, we're just going to jump straight in with comments of the day and today's episode is going to be... I suppose it's not going to be that much different than usual to be honest with you. I'll just explain to you guys. Basically, one of my family came to visit this weekend so I haven't played any foot champs at all. And I basically haven't touched FIFA other than a couple of them new fun... What are they even called? Like, I, I don't even know. The new kickoff game modes because you like no rules and all the different kinds of stuff like that. So we played a few of them against each other. But other than that, I haven't really been on FIFA. I think I was on FIFA while I was waiting for him to get his train and I managed to do a little bit of sniping and pick up some of my boy Claude Puel, who have now wiped off the transfer list. So we've got a couple more coins than we had. But I've got like no room on my transfer on my trade pile, so I deleted them off there. But we did a little bit of sniping. But other than that, I like, haven't touched FIFA at all this weekend, which means I haven't really got any specific content like backlogs to show you guys any games to show you how i'm getting on your foot champs anything like that to be honest with you so instead i thought we would have a little bit of a chat about some of the stuff that you guys are always asking me so i got myself a coffee and we can sit down and have a little chat together and we're gonna start it off with a comment of the day which is gonna be a whopping size because i'm gonna put a couple of them in there together we've got duvet yahaya Extreme GT, and then we put Joe Taylor's in there just because to make myself feel better and feel good about myself. But basically, the first two are saying get Fanatia to go with Mashesny, and then Joe Taylor's just saying no, it should be a pro trader's road to glory. So how could they not put that comment in? Because I, because I'm, I'm, I'm just I just like being called a pro trader to be honest with you. But I've got 144,000 coins there, and I'm just gonna go straight to a poll with you guys. So. These guys have got a very good point, Extreme GT and Do Vetti Hire have got extremely good points by the fact that Screening R no longer fits into our team, unfortunately. And we are going to need a different left centre back. So there's a few options we could go for, to be honest with you. There is, of course, this guy who is down in the concepts, which is, of course, Chiellini. We've then had the guys recommend me to go for Benatia, who, if you compare the two, is faster, got better dribbling and better physical, but it's got ways to fend and pass and shoot. So it's an interesting one. There's a couple of things that you guys were saying about. Someone else in the comment section was saying about Chiellini's stamina, which is only 61 compared to Bernatia's. Only 69, so it's not massively different. Bernatia is really strong, Chiellini is really strong. I don't know. I'm going to throw it over to you guys, basically. I think we could also go for a Brazilian one, which would mean Miranda, but I'm not too keen on Miranda, to be honest with you guys. If I'm being honest with you, he doesn't look particularly amazing. He's only got 79 strength, again, lacking on the stamina and stuff like that. There's no way we're going for Juan Jesus because he's only 79 rated. And then we could go for another Roma centre back. But again, I think the only good one is actually Manila. So we'd be looking at going for a Marcano or a Fazio or something like that. Not particularly keen. So the uh, the vote really is between Benatia and Chiellini. Or I suppose is the Barzagli at Juve as well. Let me have a quick little check. There is, and Benucci, so there's quite a few of them, but Benatia and Chiellini are the best two, to be honest, if you like. Going to the other ones would just be budget, and we've got like 150k, and we're going to sell Scriniar to do it, so I'm going to put a poll up straight away. Chiellini or Benatia, you guys get voting on that poll and choose my next centre-back, basically, to finish off the team or to get the team back onto full chemistry. So, that is that. The other thing that you guys are always asking me about is my custom tactics and the other thing that I want to know is have my investments started to pay off because there's an USB-C and there's obviously the Hazard, the Hazard, well the Hazard one's been out for ages, the Royce one. There's a couple of these ones that you need random players that have got like funny badges that relate to Halloween. So you've got like Lincoln City and America de Calais and I think they've both got the devil on their badge. And then there's this one where you need Orlando Pirates and somebody else, I think it's Plymouth Argyle where they got pirate ships on their badge. But then they just brought out this Bastion Schweinsteiger, so you can get a screen Schweinsteiger. And I think you need, like, German players, Bundesliga, oh, MLS players, sorry. And they need to be 83 rated. So then I'm thinking, have any of my investments gone up in price? So let's have a look at who we've got. Any Germans, any Bundesliga, and any 83s. Well, we've got all 83s, but Germans and MLS, I'm sorry, I keep saying Bundesliga, I mean the MLS. They're the ones that are going to be going up in price. Carrasco might because you need a left mid in that team, but I'm not really, I'm not getting my hopes up for that one. I don't actually think we've got any Germans or any MLS players. We definitely haven't got any MLS ones. I'm pretty sure we didn't actually get any German ones, which is kind of frustrating because they would have rocketed up in price. But I know we did get a, a lot of Leon Bailey's or Bailey, sorry, Bailey's the centre back, any. He? He's only 82. But he kind of goes into them sort of teams, and he's one of the only high-rated left mids on the game that is actually affordable. So we were getting this guy for 900 coins. Has his price been affected at all by that SBC? Let's have a look. 
No. It most definitely has not. Well, he's gone up 50 coins. <laughs> so he's gone up, what, what's that, 5%? Yeah, he's, he's gone up 5%. So we'd, we'd make back our EA tax. Awesome. Okay, that's an interesting one. I wonder if any, I don't know if any of the 83s are going up. I highly doubt it. I mean, we'll have to check. And there's, let me know when you guys think the best time to sell these is because I think it really needs a repeatable SPC. And I don't know if I've gone a little bit too deep on the investments. And maybe, maybe we should sell off the, <laughs> maybe we should sell off 44 of them because we, then we can actually get to our new stuff and open our packs and stuff and keep 95 or something like that because if we make our tax back, we'll actually be able to use our club. I don't know. I'll have a little look into it properly off camera. And we'll see. And you guys can let me know what you think down in the comment section. Like Balotelli, he was 1,300. Carrasco's 2K, which is pretty crazy. But he, like I said, he's the only left mid. This dude is 1,300. So you're picking them all up for reasonable prices. It's just whether they've actually gone up. I need to check that. And it's going to take a little bit of researching from myself to do so. For now, I'm going to show you guys my custom tactics. Because you're always asking this and you're always asking about how I set my team up in games. So this is obviously how it starts or how it will start now that we've got Chesney. It used to be Handanovic and Skriniar. But it doesn't really matter. It's still a goalie and a centre-back. If I jump over, I believe I've got one called Copy Brazil. And it looks like this in game, obviously with a goalkeeper, which we have now got our boy Chesney. So we'll pop him in just because he's going to be the one that we're going to be using. And that's how it looks. So the way that I set this team up is when we are on our normal squad, it's obviously we're going to we need to once we get into a game, use a custom tactic to change from this to the 4 2 3 1, which you guys have just seen. We've got Salah and Mane playing Cam, Firmino at striker, Taliska central Cam, these two guys at TDM, and obviously the same back four. So, what we do is we go into our custom tactics, which we can't change because we've got concept players in. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks, EA. And it should already be all set up for us. So, this is. This is my normal one. This is balanced. This is what my squad is normally. This is 4-3-3, three, 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 the default one. And I absolutely never use this. Ever. I've set up the other game plans to actually be what I play. So I never play on balance because I don't want to play 4-3-3. Three, three. I want to, as you can see, play 4-2-3-1. So the one that I always go to, first of all, is the defensive one. It's not actually defensive. The only ones that actually pertain to the names of them is ultra defensive and ultra attacking. The others are, I suppose attacking is a little bit more attacking than defensive, but it's, it's, they're not, it's not defensive. It's just my normal way of playing. So I've got it set up like this. Pressure on heavy touch, width and depth are just in the middle. Offensive style is balanced, width is pretty wide, plays in the box is quite a lot, corners and free kicks are on number three. So these, to be honest with you, you do notice a bit of a difference, but it doesn't matter that much in my opinion. All of the bars, that is, I mean, like, you can, a lot of people will play super narrow on the width for the defence, and you, you can make it, you can notice a difference, it's a little bit more compact, but then it's a little bit easier to get crosses in against you, so I just keep it in the middle. And keep it balanced. And bear in mind, I'm not a professional FIFA player. And to be honest with you, I just made most of these up and they just seem to work. I mean, I put myself down. Someone was asking me. I put a tweet out of people saying, Wait, what do I want to achieve in the Road to Glory? Where do I want to get to? People were saying, like, is my goal to get elite? Which it is. And we haven't quite managed to get there yet. Like, I full-on bottled it last week. But I kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to FIFA. Like, I'd say that I'm an, uh, an elite level player at FIFA. Which sounds stupid when I haven't actually managed to get it. But in terms of actually playing the game, it's just my mentality. Like, I full-on bottled it. Like, I was playing so bad because I was so nervous. To, like, I knew that I just needed to win one of the games. So I wasn't actually trying to win them. I was just trying not to lose and hope that I won one of them, if that makes sense. So it was full-on all in my head. But actually playing the game, I'm quite good at it. And I've got a worse team than most of the people that you come up against. And I still managed to almost get there. So give us all an even team and just put it one game. I'd probably beat most people. So I kind of just made these up, but they do work. So I would recommend trying that. This one, the defensive style pressure on heavy touch. I actually got this from Kerbs, one of the guys that I talked to. And he's a top 100 player. And I always just played it on balance because I didn't know any difference. To be honest with you, it didn't seem to... Mate, I started on balance. It worked. And I was like, all right, whatever. But he told me to go pressure on heavy touch. And it's good. You get the ball back a bit quicker each time. And it, puts your, it makes your opponents like flap is probably the word I'd use. The way they like flap under pressure, like, oh, what do I do? And it's just a little bit more in the face. I don't like constant pressure because it's just, it's too much. And your players, there's not a massive downside to it, which is annoying, but your players just run around like headless chickens. And as, as annoying as it is to play against, it can 
cost you. And I, I like this one. It's a nice it's a nice balance between balanced and constant pressure. It's pressure on heavy touch. So there's that one. Offensive style is balanced. Again, got this from Curbs. I used to have it on possession and it worked absolutely fine. You can see with these, it involves a lot of passing back if you look at them dots and nobody tries to actually make a run in behind. Whereas if you look at fast build up, everyone just bombs forwards and there's always people for a through ball. And I, I don't like that because sometimes it is better to pass the ball I can keep the ball, which is why I put it on balance and it's a nice little mixture between the two. You can go long if you want to. You can do a fast little build up and hook the ball up and play a through ball, but there is always an option. Like when I played on fast build up, there was never an option in midfield to pass the ball to and just slow the game down and keep the ball and I just couldn't deal with that. So I put it on balance and it's a nice mixture. I have it on wide because getting down the line is a very, very good way to score in this game. Plays in the box, you want people running back stick to whip the ball in. And corners and free kicks doesn't really matter that much to be honest with you. For most of my free kicks I shoot, so it doesn't really matter where the players are. You could even put it like this, you're less likely to get caught on a counter. But to be honest with you, I should probably make a video on how to score free kicks as well because I actually bang most of them in. And in corners, Honestly, I haven't even noticed the difference, and I see quite a few people complaining to me that this makes literally no difference, so knock yourselves out. These ones don't matter that much, like the actual bars, it's the style and then your custom instructions which make the biggest of differences. So that is what we're going to go on to. I've got Lucas Leiva on stay back, and I've also got him on cover wing, which is very, very bad. You should have him on cover centre, and the same goes for Palinio. I don't know why it's done that. I don't know if it's just because you've just changed the players that we're using but you definitely 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 want your center mids on cover center that is the most important one and i'm now gonna have to go through and check all of my other ones because that's really bad it shouldn't be on that it's all on cover wing have i it must have been when i made the concept squad for you guys it's reset all of the stuff this is real this is bad okay let me have a look ultra defensive is not particularly ultra defensive at all i don't know what is going on there so my custom tactics have got all messed up absolutely completely from making a concept squad i assume or something like that so we're gonna have to go through and fix all of these this, this is really bad okay so we'll do them and we'll fix them together so my number one is defensive it doesn't matter it's not actually defensive and it doesn't mean defensive you guys can set it up to whatever you want i have my instructions on taliska to stay forward which he's already on a lot of players come with default instructions already on them as you could see lucas leavers was already on stay back and Paulinho's is already on balance because he gets up and down. You want to put your centre players on cover centre. That's really, really important. Like, cover and wing leaves you so, so exposed in the middle. You absolutely 100% want defensive positioning on cover centre. There's, there's no question about it. That's what all the pros say. That's how all the pros play. Take it off it. It comes default cover wing. Cover centre is the most important one that you can have. I've got everything on Firmino is just on balance because he's a good all-round player. And then I think it's the same with these guys, to be honest with you. Like, I toggle it about with the other ones. But it doesn't matter too much. The only thing I have is Anderson Taliska on stay forward and support on crosses is get into the box because the man is like six foot four. So you want him in there for the headers. Other than that, it doesn't matter too much. Like you can stick Salah and Mane on getting the box for crosses as well. They're not likely to use them to, to actually win them. And you, it's not likely to use it and win a header and actually score a goal. But you can, event, you can occasionally. And it's a good thing to have there. Like, there's no point them lurking on the edge. That's where Paulinho and Alexandro and Florenzi and Lucas and stuff will be. You just want them actually in the box to try and get a back post header. If you had Gareth Bale and maybe Sané and people like that, you're obviously going to score loads of them. But I've, most of the game, I think I've always just left them on balance, to be honest. It doesn't matter too much. Alexandro's on balance and Florenzi's on balance. In my, this is my go-to. Start there every game. This is our play. These guys balanced. These guys balanced. Lucas Aver back. Anderson and Fliska forward. Everything else basically balanced. Apart from the cover centre, which is the most important one. So that's my go-to. Start the game. See what's going on. Sort of job. This is the balanced one that I never, ever, ever use. And then if we are struggling a little bit to break somebody down and not... We don't need to go crazy. Like, it's nil-nil. We're just struggling to get a goal. We'll switch to attacking, which is a little bit quicker of a build-up. So if the guy's really, really good at AI defending and we can't pass the ball around and make a space, we'll go to this one, which is, as you can see, a little bit more attacking, as the name would suggest. we got it on fast build-up instead. All the rest of the stuff is basically the same, to be honest with you. Other than corners, we've got way more people in the box. Don't think it makes a difference. I think it's literally exactly the same thing. Everyone else is the same. We play pretty wide. We have our width and depth on the defense basically balanced. Fast build-up is the only change there. And then all of the instructions should basically be the same, to be honest. This guy should be stay back, cover centre. Paulinho does what he wants, cover centre. Anderson and Tadiska to stay forward. And then we've got Mane and Salah on stay forward as well on this one, just to be a little bit more attacking. We want to catch him on the counter-attacks. No overlap of all my full-backs, because they go absolutely wild. And it leaves you so, so exposed at the back. So only do that 
when you're going like full on crazy, absolutely desperately need a goal, have these guys on, st <laughs> have them on during the attack. Keep it on balance, otherwise they'll go mental and you'll end up with like two defenders. So that is a, it's a bit of a crazy one, which is when we get into ultra attacking, which has now changed the formation to four triple two. And we've got Mane and uh, Firmino and Telisca up front, Mane and Salah as the cams, but we've got them on stay forward and it basically plays like four two four. And you just have this on fast build up, heavy pressure, pressure on heavy touch. You can even, if you want, put it on constant pressure and it's just chaos. Like you, you're basically playing with four defenders and six people up front and that's about it. It's nuts and it's only when you desperately, desperately, desperately need a goal because I've also got on my instructions for Alexandro. Well, it was, it should be Alexandro to get forward and it should be Florenzi to get forward as well. But like, it's, that's at your own discretion. Like, it makes it stupid. If you do that, you'll only ever have two people back, but you'll have about eight people up front. So it's very easy to actually get a chance. But if you don't score it, they're probably going to score against you. So it's a proper all or nothing job if you end up doing that. Test them out yourself and see what fits with your style of play. Now, my play is very possession-based, which is why I've transitioned quite well into FIFA 19 instead of FIFA 18. I was terrible at FIFA 18 because I was playing far too slow and I was passing the ball around nice and slowly and keeping the ball. Whereas FIFA 18 was ping, 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 ping. I'm just ping pong, pass it up the pitch and like dr driven pass it straight into your striker and threw ball it to your winger and that's a goal. And I was just so bad at it because that's just not how I play FIFA. Whereas FIFA 19, I've transitioned into it quite well because it just fits my style of play. So I would recommend filling them out with them. I was... Very comfortable on possession. I was absolutely dominating games, but I did occasionally like struggle to create a chance against someone who's actually quite good because it, the build-up was too slow, which is why I've moved it to balanced and we can like, the game seems to adapt around how you want to play. Like if I'm pinging balls over the top to Sané, to Mane or Salah, sorry, one of them, will be, the other one will be racing up the pitch. Whereas if I've got it on possession, they'll just be backwards like, pass me the ball, let's keep the ball. I'm like, I need to score a goal, what are you doing? So I've got it on balanced and it seems to be uh, just, just works quite nicely. It seems to adapt around you. So I'd recommend putting your offensive style on balance. Play around with the different ones. If you are very, very, very one-dimensional, obviously you can adapt it to it. But this one allows you to change your player in the middle of the match, which is pretty bloody good. So there we go. My custom tactic should be back to how they actually should be, which is really weird. I don't know why it's gone like that. I'm no, not sure how long it's been like that. Is that like, imagine that was in between me absolutely smashing people. And then coming on, make a wait. Oh, please don't say it was. I can't remember what video we made last weekend before we went and bottled the Sunday afternoon. Did I make a video talking to you guys about my new team? In between the first 25 and last five games, that'd be so bad if I did. Oh no, that's making me proper second guess myself now. Okay, but yeah. Like I said, I'm not a professional FIFA player, but then I suppose that's kind of helpful for you guys because like professional FIFA players play at a ridiculous pace and we've all got absolute god squads and their tactics might not work for us normal people. But I consider myself pretty good for a normal person. And if you guys are struggling with FIFA 19, struggling for what tactics to use or anything like that, I'd recommend giving these a go. Like I said, just change it in game. Pick a team that gets full chemistry, obviously, when you're, st when you're actually starting the game, like I've got here. But you don't have to play that formation. Like, I really, really like 4 2 3 1. And I really like 4 3 3 4 as well, which is I used to start like this and then have Telisca Camp and these two guys at centre mid. Switch those up to 4 2 3 1, and it seems to get Mane and Salah in the game and score a lot more goals, which is pretty decent. As you can see, Salah's scoring record is ridiculous for a centre attack in mid. He is very, very, very good. And the same goes for Mane, is that he's not doing too shabby himself. But yeah, I would. Recommend trying them out. Like I, like I said, I start on my defensive one. It's just my normal balanced default sort of play. It's not actually defensive. If I want to park a bus and park the game, it should be this one, but it's not set up. I'd have this on drop back. You put your very narrow, your depth very narrow. I think this one is either long ball or fast build up. Turn your players in the box down, turn your corners down, turn your free kicks down, and you can basically just park the bus here by telling both of the stay back while attacking, cover the center, Stay back while attacking, cover the centre. Stay back while attacking, stay back while attacking. I've even got, I think, these guys should be on. They're not on comeback on defence, but the positioning or their whereabouts, is it? That's annoying. I used to, I think my defensive one used to be a 4-3-3 third variation and you used to be able to tell Mane and Salah to come short for a pass. So what you do there is when you're like camped on the edge of the box, one of them had come backwards and like offer themselves for the ball and then you could play off in the back and try and spring a counter attacker over the other side of the pitch. You can't do it on 4 2 3 1, so I'd just have them on basic defense and try and get a fast build up. And maybe put him on basic instead of stay forward. Like I said, it's not that deep. It doesn't make huge differences, it's just little variations to your play style. So that is probably how I would set up my defense on. But I don't use it much, to be honest with you. Like, if it 
the, when I'm playing, my tactic is if it's not broke, or my motto is if it's not broke, don't fix it. The only ones I really switch between is the the defensive one and the attacking one, and the only difference is balanced attacking build up and fast play, fast build up in the attacking build up. So, not massive differences between the two of them. I would recommend giving them a go. Let me know down in the comment section if there's anything you guys would change or if you know anything more about it than me. Like, I've never played around with the conservative versus aggressive interceptions. I've always just left it on the default one. So maybe if you're a better FIFA player than me, like I've bottled Elite by one win <laughs> this last week. If you've actually got Elite or Elite 1 or 2 and you know what you're talking about, let me know and I'll adapt it and give it a little try. Like I said, I'm not the biggest genius, but the good tactics, it works for me. I was like 22 and 5 in the last weekend league I played, but unfortunately my mentality went, not my actual tactics and play it. So it is what it is. I hope this guy, I hope this helped you guys out. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. A little bit of a cheating one because I didn't want to ruin the streak. What are we on? Is this episode 27? So we'd have 27 videos in a row, but I didn't have any stuff recorded for you guys for this weekend. And I didn't want to not upload and break the streak. So I'll be back to normal videos for tomorrow where we've got like stuff I did and then an actual little bit of talking for you guys about how we're getting on. But yeah, for today, that's where we're going to leave it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Like Most of you guys just seem to throw this on in the background while you're playing FIFA yourselves and stuff like that. So something for you to listen to. Me rabbiting on about my custom tactics. And let me know if you guys have some joy whilst changing to these tactics. But for now, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.